On the 27th of February, the Catholic Church remembers Saint Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows, an Italian passionist clerical student. Born to a professional family, he gave up ambitions of a secular career to enter the passionist congregation. His life in the monastery was not extraordinary, yet he followed the rule of the congregation perfectly and was known for his great devotion to the sorrows of the Virgin Mary. Born as Francesco Pacenti on March 1, 1838 in Assisi, Italy, he was the 11th of 13 children, born to his mother Agnes and his father Sante. The family were then resident in the town of Assisi, where Sante worked for the local government. As a child and young man, Francesco Pacenti was well liked by his peers and had a reputation for great charity and piety. In 1841, Sante moved the family to Spoleto, where he was appointed magistrate. In that same year, the youngest Pacenti child died at just six months old. Francis's nine-year-old sister Adele soon followed. Just days later, his heartbroken mother was too called to eternal life. Francis had lost his mother at just four years old. Tragedy continued to plague the family during his youth. In 1846, Francis's brother Paul was killed in the Italian war with Austria. Another brother, Lawrence, later took his own life. Such events, however, did not rob Francis of his spirit and cheerfulness. During his formative years, Francis attended the school of the Christian Brothers and then the Jesuit College in Spoleto. He was lively, intelligent and popular at school. At 16, he suffered a life-threatening illness. Praying for a cure, Francis promised to become a religious. With recovery, however, Francis quickly forgot his promise. But God's call would not be denied, and Francis soon turned his heart to the congregation of the Passionists. Sante Pacenti was less than pleased with his teenage son's decision. Determined to show Francis the joys of a secular life of theatre and society parties, Sante continued to hope Francis would find pleasure in a social life. But the young man was not to be dissuaded. Immediately after completion of his schooling, he left for the passionate novitiate in Moravalli. In the novitiate, he cultivated a great love for Christ crucified. Francis received the Passionist habit on September 21, 1856, which that year was the Feast of the Sorrowful Mother. He was given the name Gabriel of the Sorrowful Mother. A year later, he took his vows. His monastic life, preparing for the priesthood, made Gabriel a secluded, non-public figure. His writings reflect his close relationship with God and his mother. Gabriel proved an excellent student, and his excellence in academic life was only outdone by the great progress he was making in his spiritual life. At the same time, Gabriel began to display the first symptoms of tuberculosis. The news did not worry Gabriel, who was in fact joyful. He had prayed for a slow death so as to be able to prepare himself spiritually. Throughout his illness, he remained cheerful and kept up all his usual practices. He was a source of great edification and inspiration to his fellow students who sought to spend time with him at his deathbed. Gabriel had proved himself an exemplary religious and a perfect follower of the Passionist rule, being especially devoted to the Virgin Mary. On his deathbed, he ordered his spiritual writings to be burnt, for he feared they would tempt him to be proud. Only his letters survive, alongside his resolutions, which map the spiritual progress he made in his few years as a Passionist. Before he could be ordained a priest, Gabriel died in the retreat at Isola del Gran Sasso in the early hours of February 27, 1862, in the presence of the community, holding close an image of Our Lady of Sorrows and smiling peacefully. Those who were with Gabriel when he died reported that at the moment of death, he sat up in bed, 
and his face became radiant as he reached out to an otherwise unseen figure that was entering the room. It was the opinion of Father Norbert that Saint Gabriel had seen the Virgin Mary at the very moment of his death. In 1866, four years after the death of Gabriel, the Passionists were forced to abandon the monastery of Isola del Gran Sasso and the church where Gabriel lay buried when deserted for 30 years. Since his death, the fame of Gabriel's sanctity had spread through the local area as well as amongst the Passionists. In 1891, the congregation decided to formally open proceedings for Gabriel's canonization and a year later, a committee visited his grave to examine his remains. The two miracles presented for the beatification of Gabriel were the inexplicable healings of Maria Mazzarella from pulmonary tuberculosis and instantaneous cure of Dominic Tiber from an inoperable hernia. Gabriel was beatified by Pope Pius V on May 31, 1908. Present at the ceremony were his brother Michael, his companion brother Sylvester, and his director, Father Norbert. The outbreak of the First World War delayed Gabriel's canonization for a while, but on May 13, 1920, he was raised to the altars by Pope Benedict XV and was declared the patron saint of Catholic youth, of students, and of those studying for the priesthood. Placing all our petitions before him today, let us together pray. O Lord, you gave St. Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows a special love for your mother and a compassion for her sorrows. Through her, you raised him to the heights of holiness. Give us great devotion to her sorrows that we may know her as our loving mother. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen.